God is in the media. I'd like to start out by showing you a video. Uh, maybe it's possible a couple of you have seen this, but probably most of you have not. So we're going to roll the tape. Three, two. <laughs> Today I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. Did you see that? Do you see that? It's possible I'm having an obsessive compulsive moment. Do you feel that? That's what I experience all the time. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. <laughs> and suddenly, a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind. <laughs> and there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. <laughs> Have you ever just wanted to make the sound of a goat? <laughs> no, there's no such thing as a holy goat. What role does the Holy Spirit have in my life? Why do I need the Holy Spirit? None of that makes sense. Here's the deal. In the very beginning of the Bible, there's the Spirit. In the very middle of the Bible, there's the Spirit. And then in the very end of the Bible, there's the Spirit. Jesus Christ comes and he says when he's getting ready to ascend, he's going to send the Comforter. And the Holy Spirit comes. And the Holy Spirit rushes down on that early church, fills them. And then they go out filled with incredible passionate fire. And they share the good news of who Jesus is and what he's done. The Spirit of the Lord is inside of us. And it cries out, Abba, Father, Daddy, the Spirit of the Lord. Why? Why do we need the Spirit? What is the Spirit? The Spirit of God is given to you and I so that we can look at God, know God, and love God. What will that love look like? Well, for you, it might be something as simple as saying yes to your mom and dad when they ask you to do something. Or it might be an opportunity for you to assist somebody who's struggling academically. Or it might be something amazing like going down to a soup kitchen and feeding people that are hungry and giving drink to people who are thirsty. See, you and I have all sorts of moments all day long where we can be sacrificial, where we can be people of self-donation. When we do that, we imitate and model in time the love of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is a person, the third person of the Blessed Trinity. And the Holy Spirit wants to come into your life, blow into your life, do something amazing in your life. That's what happens at baptism. We are filled with the Spirit. We're born again. It's incredible. The old is gone, the new has come. At confirmation, we renew our baptismal promises and the Holy Spirit rushes into our life, flows into our life, and enables us to become a great evangelizer, just going out and spreading the good news. The Spirit of God is given to you so that you can be that person of complete gift. When Jesus gives himself completely to the Father and the love of the Holy Spirit at Calvary, it changes the world. When you give your love to others, when you share yourself, when you sacrifice and serve other people, that's the Spirit of God working in your life. What are you waiting for? You're filled with the Spirit. And while you might not speak in tongues, you still have the chance to go out and change people's lives forever. So this video uh, was something that was done uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago. And uh, it was uh, done with the ministry called Outside the Box, and they put out video catechesis. And so uh, about four times a year or so, parishes get all sorts of materials uh, that help them through the media share the gospel. Uh, in fact, Bob Rice, who uh, is, of course, not here right now, but he's written tons of scripts for that media, uh, for that media outlet. And, uh, and it's become quite the... Uh, production, like there was a movie that was basically a mini movie that was done, kind of recounting the story where the paralytic was lowered before Jesus during that time in the Gospels where he's preaching. Look, media is a very big deal. It's a very important uh, part of the evangelization process, and it would be ridiculous in a way for us not to use it. But I think there are two extremes that happen a lot of times. There's when we talk about the media, there's a tendency for some people to say. You know, the media's got a lot of danger zones. It's got a lot of things that are bad. 
And, uh, and so we need to not have media at all. And there's like this extreme behavior where there's no television, no music, hardly at all, unless it's like Irish music because, of course, Jesus was Irish. And then, uh, and then there's the other extreme where it's kind of like there's no boundaries because all media is a go. It's no big deal. No safeguards, no, no boundaries, no parameters and stuff. And I think that the balance is necessary when we talk about media, when we talk about media. See, the truth is, is uh, all of you in some form and fashion probably in this room use media to a large degree, far more than your parents and your grandparents, that's for sure. Uh, it's so weird now, right? We just take out our phone and bam, we're connected. Uh, and uh, it's funny because uh, I would say to my daughter something like, send me an email, and she looked at me like I was brain damaged. Like, we don't do emails, what are you talking about? Like, if you want me to communicate with you, I'll text uh, and I'm thinking, okay, how about we just talk face to face? Uh, and the answer would be no. Uh, so what do we do? Well, we go online and, and that, that's it. So Twitter, we go to Twitter and we see all the insane things that are happening. And, and in a moment, 144 characters, right, we can have our little response. And sometimes it can be sarcastic. Sometimes it can be funny. Sometimes, honestly, I have no idea what my daughters are communicating, right? She'll just say something like, ridiculous, What's the context for that? How am I supposed to know what the crap you're talking about? Ridiculous. Actually, I do know what she was talking about. She was mad at me. And so she, put, she tweeted to all her friends, ridiculous. And guess what? All her friends knew. Right? Because parents are crazy. Or cray-cray. My dad is so cray. He doesn't get me. Of course he doesn't get you. You're a freak of nature. Okay? You're weird. But we use media all the time. We go on, uh, you know, Facebook. Maybe that's not your thing so much anymore. That's probably more for old people. Uh, and now it's all about Snapchat, you know, like four seconds of what the crap was that, right? It's weird, man. It's weird stuff. When I'm talking about media or God is in media, I don't want you to get confused here. I'm not saying that every time you send out a tweet it has to be like, Jesus loves you. Here's the Bible verse for today, right? Jesus wept, right? He's thinking about your sins. That's not going to work, right? If you use media for the purpose of, of evangelizing and like every time you go on your social network and you're, and you're just constantly bombarding people with a preachy attitude, it's realistic. You're not going to have very many followers because nobody likes to be preached at, you know? But... Just as you make little comments about a movie that you saw, food that you eat, like Instagram. Like I feel like you basically, Instagram is like food porn a lot of the times, you know. It's like here's this food I just ate. Don't you wish you could have had it? <sniffs> Too bad. You can't. It's in my stomach now. <laughs> okay. Then why did you take a picture of it? To make me feel horrible, basically. Because I'm eating hot dogs tonight. All right. We use social media to communicate and to connect with people all the time. It's a big deal for us. Yes or yes? Oh, yes. But when you go on social media, do you use it to, to just be yourself? Probably that's where you're most yourself a lot of times. Where you go and you take the pictures of the things that you like and that's what you put up. And all your friends are cheering you on. Like, 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 800 likes. Super popular today. I'm super popular. Right? How come nobody liked my picture of my lasagna? So sad. That's the tragedy. I think sometimes that we associate our worth with the amount of likes and responses that we get on social media. And it's weird in a way. And some of the old people complain about this, right? They complain that always our face is in the phone, right? Our face is in our computers and our little uh, iPads or, you know, whatever, tablets. And, and it's like we've disconnected so much from society. And I'm not really a uh, poo-poo-y kind of person when it comes to this kind of stuff. Like I see the value of it. For me, I use social media a lot to find people who uh, are in need of prayer. And so I'll go through the list of things and I'll see tons of need, great need for people to interact and to pray. One time I was going through this social media stuff, Facebook I think is what I was on at the time, and a kid basically wrote this post. He said, if I... If I didn't exist, would anybody care? It was insane. And tons of people were coming in right at that moment to, to speak into that kid's life. 
And sometimes that becomes a cry for help, that social media arena. It's a big deal. It really is a big deal. I guess what I'm going to say to you is it's okay to be yourself, to have fun, to tweet or to Instagram pictures of, of all sorts of funny, hilarious things that are part of your life. Like you don't have to use every single moment to be overtly trying to communicate the gospel. But Christ should be so in your life that you're not afraid to share that. Who are you? I bet if I spent a little time just going through your, your Instagram account, and your Twitter, or your Facebook, your Snapchat, I bet I could find out an insane amount about you. Like what it is that you're interested in. What it is that you like. And it's weird because once you get to know somebody, you see it. It's clear what they like. Yes? Dude, I'm a hardcore, don't be mad at me, but I'm a hardcore Steelers fan. We live just like literally 25 minutes from Pittsburgh. A, 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 A. A. Every, you know what? You all can be wrong. Okay, so here's the deal. As a small kid, I lived in North Dakota. We had no basic NFL football team. You had maybe the Vikings in Minnesota. Uh, maybe you had the Green Bay Packers, the Bears. That's kind of the options, Kansas City. But Steelers, in their 70s, they were the dream team. Man, Lynn Swan, Rocky Blyer, Mel Blount, Franco Harris, Terry Bradshaw. I mean, it was an epic time. And I've been a Steeler fan my whole life because of that. It's not hard to see what football team we're into when you come to the Paget house. But there are other things about us that are so obvious. One day my little boy Joe, he went over to the neighbor's house, right? And uh, he saw Mr. Perrin and he went over to Mr. Perrin's house. And, and Mr. Perrin looked at little Joe. He's probably my thuggiest child, my little chubby, ch chubby Joe. And uh, Mr. Perrin looked at Joe and said, Joe... I know your brother likes pancakes, because for a while, Colby, he was going everywhere just telling everybody, I like pancakes. And boys are weird like that. Sometimes they get stuck. It's like they're skipping, like an old record will skip. Colby, every time he communicated, pancakes came into the conversation. He's, uh, he's weird. And uh, I gave those weird genes to him. I'm pretty proud of that. So Mr. Perrin looked at Joe and said, I know your brother likes pancakes. That's pretty obvious. He goes, but, but what do you like? And little Joe has kind of a speech impediment, so he's like, I like Legos. And he's like, oh, that's kind of cool. I can see that you would like Legos. Those are awesome. And he goes, uh, so, Joe, uh, what does your mom like? And Joe says, my mom likes iced coffee. She does like iced coffee, right? So he's like, oh, that's cool. Well, Joe, what does your dad like? And he's like, my dad likes my mom. Oh, that is obvious. Yes. <laughs> the thing I love about me, which is a weird thing to say, is I love to laugh. I think things are very funny. And I can't help it. There's no way I could be like Matt Fred, or I, could, I couldn't be like Bob Rice. I couldn't be like Katie for obvious reasons. I couldn't. I couldn't be anybody but myself, and when I go on social media, I can't help but be crazy and silly. I just, it's in my blood, okay? And, and as a result of that, I decided to use media to express something bizarre and hilarious. And I just feel like we're made in God's image and likeness, and that God, I just believe he laughed really, really hard. I mean, he made some funny looking animals and he made us and we toot and that is hilarious don't tell me god doesn't have a sense of humor that has got to be one of the funniest things ever and it's so real so natural and it smells and there was a report that i saw on facebook today and everything on facebook is real that said that the gas that we emit might actually help cure cancer so smell that Here's a video I did. Uh, I'm going to be filming the next part of that on Monday. But I want you to enjoy and laugh a little bit for just a second here. Hello. My name is Chris Padgett, and I approve this message. The last four years have been very difficult for our country. And that's why I'm running for president of the United States of America.
Some people might say, Chris, why are you running for president of the United States of America? Because. I believe in reaching out to the communities in this country and being a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. I believe that we need to find ways to reach out to one another and to communicate with each other about the difficulties that we face on a regular basis. I'm all about jobs and I'm all about increasing the economy and also increasing education for children. I believe that America has been hijacked by political pirates that have sailed in without any checks and balances. There should, there should be just free cheese given to people who are poor. We, we go ahead and give free health care to everybody, including pets. Everybody has to do P90X in this country to get fit. Golf should become a sport in China. Dolls should not be made out of plastic. Okay. I promise if you elect me president, your life will never be the same. We need to balance our budget. When I was a small boy, we used to take vegetables and and fruits and we would we would put them in jars and we would call them canning jars and we would seal them without the air in it and stuff and then we could open it later and then we could enjoy it, the fruits of our labor which incidentally was fruit here's the thing four years ago I ran as Jesus is running mate and I meant it and Jesus and I, we've had many conversations since then, but apparently the United States of America was not so interested in having Jesus as president. We had somebody else as president. Things have not been going so great. There have been jobs that are lacking and gas prices are way too high. Milk costs a lot of money and people don't get to go on vacations and stuff. And so I thought, I would ask Jesus if it's okay if I ran for president this year, and he said that I could, and so I am. What you see is what you get with me, okay? You just know. Chris Paget, born in Detroit, Michigan, or somewhere close to there. Chris Paget comes from a man and a woman that were married together at least before their marriage was wrecked by divorce. Chris Paget financially devastated throughout the majority of his life, and that's no funding to really run for president. But whatever, we're doing it. I think I did a Kickstarter account for this. Here's the deal. I'm gonna do some things, that, and I think that you're gonna like what I'm gonna do. My question is this. Does a person wearing spandex really need to go through security at the international airports? Think about it. I'm a man that's fearless, okay? I went kayaking recently. I think that says it all. I am gonna be the coach for America. America's coach, Chris Paget for president. I am coaching America to be successful, fearless, courageous, fit, athletic. I'm gonna be training America to be hydrated and economically savvy. Let me talk to you about who I've chosen to assist me in my presidency, okay? My wife. That's who I picked as my vice president. And it makes all the sense in the world. First of all, she's smarter than I am. Second of all, my wife is very wise and smart. And she does the budget at our house. I've seen her give birth nine times. Now, the last one was a C-section, so she really didn't do anything. Anyway, look, here's the thing. My wife is gonna be the vice president. You have nothing to fear. 
okay, except fear itself, and that's why I'll carry a big stick. If I can't get this job done in four years, then let's agree right now that you'll hire me for another four years so that I can get the job done in eight years. Guten Morgen. May I make this better? Parlez-vous français? Don't worry about that. This is crazy. I just met you. Here's my number. Call me, maybe. I, I also think that my, my role as presidency is a lot like a wet nurse. And I believe that I am called to nourish this country, to suckle this country, or no, yeah, to, to have the country suckle. No, uh, uh, future president, you don't have to look at the microphone. My name is Chris Paget, and I approve this message. Cut. What? You don't have to do the hand. You don't have to do All right, hold on. I'm, I'm good. I got it. Hello, my name is Chris Paget. Pause. I promise if you elect me to be your president that I will insist that every working mother stop working and stay at home with their babies. I don't think that's going to fly with really any women. Do I need their vote? Why can't you do one thing right? You have one job. This is in my way. In other words, I'm going to care for you like a parent cares for, like I care for my child, okay? We'll suckle you, we'll nourish There's you. There's that word again. Stop suckle. with the suckling. Okay, you'll suckle No, no, us. no. Relax it if with me. You're president. I'm 42 years old and I have a zip. What the crap is that? I look at America like they're an alcoholic. Cut. I wanna be the 12 steps to America's alcoholism. I'm gonna be the solution to their disease. I think that's offensive to not only alcoholics, but non-alcoholics. Maybe I am an alcoholic. Thank you. Should I be recording this? As your president, I want to lend a hand to you. That was forced, I think. I'm about to choke you. When are we starting? Whatever! Starting over. Cut. Hello, my name is Chris Paget, and I approve this message. Get it out of the scene! My name is Chris Paget, and I approve this message. Don't worry about the hands. My name is Chris Paget, and I approve this message, and I've had a lot of caffeine today. I'm running for president of the United States of America. Here's the deal. We have a problem in this country. There are too many weeds. I never inhaled. That is true. It's true. Oh, it is? Oh my gosh, that was weird. It's usually 99.99% .99 of the time, and that's an, actual, that's an actual statistic. Is it? You looked it up. I just made it. But it's an actual statistic. It is a, it is a it, statistic. It's your actual statistic. It's, it's a stat that I believe strongly in. <laughs> yeah! I can do anything. I want to be a president, that's for sure. My policies are going to be really pure. Sometimes I like to look at porcelain hands. Okay. Look at me. Media can be awesome, can be so fun. And listen, I think it's important for us as Catholics to go out there and like take over. 
Uh, we should be able to laugh the best. We should be able to appreciate the most beauty, to, to be the most creative. I mean, we are in a relationship with God who is creator, who is goodness, who is truth, who is beauty, who is joy. And I think it's weird that we've reduced our Catholic faith down to, like, what's boring and what's only serious. And, and it's like we, we think, well, if I'm going to talk about God, I'm going to use the media, and it has to always be serious. It does not. God is in the media because you're in the media, and you are made in God's image and likeness. God is in the media because you're in the media, and you are God's image and likeness. It's time for us to take back what it is that we have. And using all things for the glory of God, for the greater glory of God. And that doesn't mean that we reduce it down to some sort of utilitarianistic kind of idea. In other words, it doesn't have to be just Jesus phrase, Jesus phrase, Jesus phrase. It can be all about life. And in all of life, Christ becomes present. It's what's so gorgeous about being Catholic. <clears throat> so many awesome songs. So many awesome songs that are out there by people who have a faith life, but they're not necessarily speaking overtly about Jesus in every phrase of the song. Sometimes we look at someone's creativity and we think, gosh, you are so gifted and so creative. Wouldn't it be awesome for you to give your life to the Lord? <coughs> and what would happen? It's possible that they would write the same kind of songs they wrote, except this time it would be so much more rich and deep. We have the answers. We should be able to be reflecting those answers in the things that we say and do. Look, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that sometimes we use media inappropriately. What is it that we need? What do we want in our life? Let's look at this slide for a second. What do we want? What do we want? And I think when we look at the media, there's a lot of ways for us to approach this. What do you want? I'm going to use a media form right now, PowerPoint. I'm going to show you a bunch of little different things here. And this is on purpose. I'm going to use this medium because, because this is an avenue in which uh, we've been given. And I think this is effective. A picture says a thousand world, what words. So what do you want? Here's the first slide. <coughs> Does anybody know where this picture comes from? Uh, next picture. Sorry. The, ne the next picture. Anybody know what car that's from? What TV show? Starsky and Hutch. Some of you guys might remember the movie that Ben Stiller did and uh, Owen Wilson. So, but that was a takeoff of a TV show called Starsky and Hutch. And as a kid, man, I loved that show. But this car was epic. <coughs> Cars, interestingly enough, especially in the 70s, were a big deal for television. In fact, uh, you think of a couple classic cars. There was the Trans Am in the movies with Cannonball Run with Burt Reynolds. Now, probably nobody here would recognize that or remember that necessarily unless your dad was watching that movie and you were forced to watch it as a kid, right? But then we had, we had the General Lee from Dukes of Hazard. Oh my gosh, what an epic car that was. I mean, it literally would fly through the air. And then we had, like, uh, Magnum P.I. had the red Ferrari. That was always the big deal. I mean, cars in the 70s, that was the stuff. And people really attri attributed, like, like, making it with the kind of car they had. They called them these muscle cars, those uh, Ford Mustangs and uh, the uh, Camaros. Here's another picture. Next slide. What do we want, right? Does anybody know what these are? I'll be amazed if you do. They're called Micronauts. And right around the time that we had the Transformer figures, these Micronauts came out. And they were basically ghetto toys for uh, kids who couldn't afford their real Transformers. These were the toys I had because my mom was poor. See those shoes they're wearing? Those look like my shoes. All right. Here's the next slide. What do we, uh, we want to look good, right? So what do we want? Well, we want to look good. You know, we want cool things. We want to look good. Here, here's a picture of me after uh, swimming. Normally, I don't allow for people to take photos of me, but, but here I am. Uh, <laughs> this is called a blobfish. It's a real fish. Don't tell me God doesn't have a sense of humor. Look, at, it looks like boogers are coming out of its mouth right there. It's disgusting and hilarious. That's a real fish God created. Looks like Dilbert, kind of. 
We want to look good. Here, next slide, right? All the girls love Zac Efron. <laughs> Control yourself, weirdos. Next slide. We want to be accomplished, right? This is an actual picture of me after I graduated high school. Here it is. Uh, I'm pretty much shocked that I actually graduated. I got educated, Grandma. I did it. Here's another. Right, we want to be accomplished. Does anybody remember? <laughs> it's a major award. It's a major award for Jille. <laughs> that movie is probably one of the best movies ever in the history of movies. And uh, Cleveland, do we got Cleveland people here? <laughs> you guys are weird. All right. He thought he had won, like, the lottery. This was the greatest accomplishment ever. And he wanted the whole neighborhood to see, much to his wife's horror. Do you remember that? And they all stepped outside, and they're looking at this neon leg in their window. And, of course, it breaks, and uh, he blames the wife. But moving on. Next, uh, next slide. We want to be prepared. This is a real slide, or a real thing. Next slide here. I saw... I saw this. Men, severe weather, shelter area. I guarantee you if there's a tornado, I'm not going in a men's bathroom. It is one dirty place. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right. Next slide. Here we go. Clown ministry. Uh, that's overly prepared. Okay. Next slide. We want cool story. We want a cool story. Here we go. This is a real picture. This is me. Next slide here. That's me. I'm the one on the left. <laughs> I'm sitting next to a lion. For real. Here's a question to my parents. <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> there were two lions. I ate the other one. <laughs> mm, it looks good. Kit Kat. Here's another slide here. What do we need, though? I think sometimes we go to the media because we're trying to satisfy a need. I think we go to the media a lot because I think that's an easy way for us to try to satisfy this need that we have inside of us. Whether it's going to uh, pornography sites just because we want to be stimulated or we want to, to see something that's... Uh, that's going to appeal to our senses and our passions and we want instant gratification or, or maybe we're just infatuated with trying to get as many people to follow us on, on whatever, Twitter or Instagram or, or uh, Path or fill in the blank with any of the bazillions of, of places. We go there and that's like where we're trying to, we're trying to satisfy a need like I want to be loved. Like I want to be seen. I, I, need, I need someone to notice that I'm struggling. You know, and so, and so we'll put that little thing up there on Facebook, and, and if we can get just somebody to comment, it, like, it can make our day. And, and in a way, it's kind of it's kind of frustrating and sad in a way to think that that's, that's where we're going to go to try to satisfy the great need, but, but it is understandable. It is understandable. Next slide, eh? So what do we need? You know, who is Jesus to you? And we're back, right? Next slide here. Who is Jesus to you? Oh, my gosh. Cyclops Jesus. Fast. Pass that one. Pass that one. Pass that one. No! Pass that one. Pass that one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did you see that? He's like, I'm back. We're impacted by our past, but we don't have to be trapped by it. And look, maybe some of you guys have made mistakes on, on social media. You've been there and you've kind of you've kind of epically imploded and and you've used it for the wrong reasons. And, and, and so the, the extreme of just shutting everything down and saying, no, 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 never, never, never. I'm not going to do that anymore is not really the answer. We can change. Uh, we can use social media in ways that really impact and change the life of people for the positive, right? St. Maximilian Colby, one of my all-time favorite saints. He's known for a couple things. One, he's known for his great love for Mary. 
Two, he's known as a martyr for the church. He's a saint, Maximilian Kolbe, K-O-L-B-E. And he gave his life up at Auschwitz, the concentration camp during World War II, for a man who had a family. I named my son Kolbe after him. But one of the things about St. Maximilian Kolbe that's so amazing is that he loved the media. He was radical. In fact, some Catholic organizations intentionally have St. Maximilian Kolbe as their patron saint for their media. They have, like, a lot of times they'll use even Maximilian and Kolbe in their name for their media outlets because he was so revolutionary. In fact, he came out with a magazine uh, that uh, was spread all over. And he started... Uh, things even in Japan, and he was a genius, and he used radio. I mean, that was, I mean, he wanted to reach people, and he knew media was the best way to reach them. Most of you don't know Fulton Sheen, but his canonization process will be, right, really, really starting to, to roll for us here. And he was a genius and a television personality that was unmatched. And probably your grandparents love sitting down watching Fulton Sheen on TV. There have been some amazing and magnetic personalities that God has given to folks who have used that personality to change the world. And everybody here, we're finishing up right with the World Cup. And uh, we saw our USA, unfortunately, not necessarily win, but that goalie, wasn't he epic? Uh, holy cow. And they had all these hilarious memes, right? Uh, I'm saving the day and... Uh, my gosh, uh, then they quoted him, right? And he thanks Jesus. And it wasn't corny. It just was the reality of who he was. It just came out. I love that he is like one of the best ever in his sport. And yet he's willing to, to say, you know, when it's all said and done, it's Christ who is who's really important to me. You can't argue with that, right? I mean, you can't, like, look at him and say, you're a dork now, because he's not, right? He's amazing. Like, what happens if you and I are real and we allow Christ to be, to be real through us in media? We'll, we'll change the world. We'll be like the saints. It is dangerous, though. You've got to be careful. Next slide, eh? Next slide. We all have a mom and a dad. And maybe our mom and a dad frustrate us and we have these influences in our life and they say, you can't. Go here, you can't do that. Look, don't fight it. Let them lead you and guide you. God put them in your life on purpose. And if they have restrictions for you, then thank God for it. And you'll have time soon enough to do stupid things. This is a picture. Next slide here. This is my grandmother in a wedding dress. I love Facebook and Instagram for this reason. I can take these old pictures and I can put them up. And it's not an overt Jesus comment, but it's like, this is my heritage. This is my life. And in it all, we celebrate the good moments, and we celebrate even the struggles. Next slide. This is a picture of my dad, and uh, he's holding me. I'm the one with corn in my hand, and my legs are huge. <laughs> Next slide, right? This is a picture of my dad and my sister and I. This is the 70s. This is how we rolled. I think I'm, I think I'm wearing... Uh, my mother's sweater, and I think my sister is wearing a half shirt that's not a half shirt. Okay. Next slide, right? So, friends. And we use probably social media most when it comes to our friends. We're interacting with our friends nonstop, and that's where we're communicating with them. We're texting them. We're having a blast with them. Next slide here. I think in a lot of ways my sister was probably one of my best friends when I was a kid. We hung out, and we had a lot of fun together. Next slide. She was... Biting my face off at the top left picture. Uh, it's just how we rolled. Next slide. Yeah. Friends. That's for all my nerds out there. Next slide. And that significant other. Oh, yeah. Well, we are using our social media for our significant others, aren't we? Hey. What you wearing? For shizzle, manizzle. Nobody speaks like that, Chris. Don't be jealous of me because I'm talking to the hot babes on the line all day long. <laughs> Next slide. This is a picture of me when I was skinny. This is my wife. She's the one in the wedding dress. No, the one on the left is my wife. <laughs> Uh, 
creepy. Next slide. She's eating. Next slide. She's a rock star. Next slide. Okay. That's my family. And that is real. Every personality is there, basically. That is, that's our normal picture. Next slide. See, when you want what God wants, it's going to happen. And I think God wants you to have a blast and be filled with joy and to use the media and have fun with it. But I think he also wants to be so real in your life that, that you talking about him shows up. You guys, on Monday, I'm filming my next presidential election video. It's going to be hilarious. But listen, why am I doing that? Because it's going to be so funny. It's going to be awesome. And I'm still that crazy, in love with God Christian, even when I make a silly video like that. I want you to close your eyes. Nobody's looking around. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I want to I ask you, like, seriously. Are you struggling in the media? Like, are you struggling with using that properly? And if you are, I want to invite you and encourage you to put some boundaries in place. If you're struggling with things that you know you shouldn't be looking at on the computer, on your tablets and your iPads, then put them in a public location and look at stuff in a public place so that you're not in an environment and in a place that you can have trouble. If you're struggling with with doing things uh, uh, that you know you shouldn't be doing with your, with your phones, uh, then listen, give your phone to your mom at night and say, Mom, I want you to have this at night, and I'm going to get it from you in the morning. She might say, why? And you can just say, look, I just don't want to be distracted. I need to go to sleep, get some rest. She might look at you like you're crazy, but you can have accountability stuff in place to help you. Next time you go on Facebook, you should make a, a habit of like finding five people that you can say, I'm praying for you. I'm cheering you on. Next time you send out a tweet, you could say, uh, listen, God's touching my life at Stuby14. Pray for me. Look, don't be afraid to be yourself, but don't be afraid to let Christ into that place, that media. Because this is it. This is where we're at as a culture. And God, I believe, wants to say a lot through you. You are made in his image and likeness. Let the love of Christ flow through you. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. St. Maximilian Colby, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Blessings to you. We'll see you later.